Yes, we are. <laughs> Hi, guys. We are here with Tyler at Futural Hall. Uh, he is a resident technician, and he's going to walk us through some housing services today. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks, Chris, for having me, and thank you, Sophie, for live streaming this. Yeah. Um, like Sophie said, my name is Tyler, and I'm a technician here at University Housing. Um, we provide technical and network support for your students living in our resident uh, residential dorms. Mm -hmm. um, over here on this laptop, I can show you some of the services housing provides for the residents in our dorms. So you can visit this webpage, housing.uark.edu, and then head over to services. And on this page, you can see all of the services that we provide for some of our students, which include Cox Cable, um, laundry, mental health services, mail packages, etc. Um, today we'll be going through some of these and going into detail so you guys can have a better idea of what housing provides for your students. Great, and we have about 11 people tuned in today. If everyone wants to tell us where they're from, that'd be cool. I'll start with me, I guess. Um, I'm from <laughs> Fort Smith, Arkansas, so I'm kind of local around here. Um, and I've been up and down in Northwest Arkansas basically my whole life. What do you study? Computer science. Very cool. So tell us about the, uh, the cable system. All right. yeah. So over on my right side, you can see we have our cable hooked up to this monitor, and it's functioning. Um, we provide Cox cable. If I can get this remote to work. Um, we have many different packages included with Cox cable. Uh, you can get more details on our housing page under the Cox tab. Um, you can see here there are many different channels you can choose from to watch. It also comes with Cox Contour and HBO. Nice. Yeah. And we have a couple people from Houston, someone from Franklinville, New York, and someone from St. Louis. All over there. Yeah, all over the country. Place. <laughs> I'd have you tune in. Sophie, if you come over here behind, I don't know if you can see, but um, in our rooms, there will be a Cox box mounted somewhere. In this room specifically in Futural, it is behind this desk. Um, and connected to the Cox box is a HDMI coax cable, an IR extender for your remote, and a power cable. Um, if you need help installing any of these, um, any of these devices, you can contact us and we'll send out a technician to come install it for you or provide you a guide on how to install it. And for equipment that you need, such as remotes, HDMI cables, or power cables, um, this year the front desk will actually have boxes of supplies that you can go to, like the front desk, and ask, um, you know, whatever you need instead of having to have a technician to come out because of um, these new COVID-19 implementations. That's great. And we also have Cameron from Yellville, Arkansas here. Yellville, we like Yellville. <laughs> See, on this Cox page, it also lists physical addresses for your dorms, which is different than your PO box. That is very important to note. Um, typically, you won't have to contact Cox um, support yourself, you can contact resident and we will do the, um, the communication for you. Let's see, Greek houses, Duncan apartments, yep. Also, interestingly, you can uh, request additional services from Cox. Um, I believe the student would pay extra they for would, those services. Yeah, so like DVR and mm -hmm. stuff, yeah. But um, if you would like DVR services and anything else, you can contact us and we can get you in touch with Cox. Great. What other services are we offering these days? Let's see. In terms of Cox Cable? Oh no, no, or just in general. general housing services, yeah. Let's see, second on the list is ResNet. Oh, you know a bit about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I work for them. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, ResNet, like I said, we provide technical and network support for students living in our residence halls. Um, this would include getting your devices connected to the internet, such as gaming consoles, your phone, your laptop, streaming devices, your smart assistants, like anything you need to get connected, we can try to help you as much as possible to get those connected. Um, our contact is on this housing page. You can find our number, 479-575-2905, extension three. Um, you can also contact us by, contact us by email. 
and also by creating a support ticket. Um, let's see. Also new for this year, we actually upgraded our phone system so we can text uh, students who need help with their devices, which is pretty cool. Um, I don't know, everyone's on their phone all the time, but like emails, you kind of just, you know, it goes over your head. But uh, with texting, um, it makes direct messaging students quicker. Maybe they're in class, they can't necessarily pick up the phone at the moment, but um, with SMS texting, uh, we can get to students pretty conveniently. That's great. Mm -hmm. um, Becky has a question. She yes. said, did you say that the PO is not part of the mailing address? Um, let me go back to the Cox page. So on this page, um, the physical address is not necessarily the mailing address. Yes. Yeah. Um, so let's say for, for Hots Hall, I believe they use Northwest Quads um, PO boxes. There's a, there's a page on there that we're going to get to called Mail and Packages, yes. which has all that information if you want to mail something. Mm -hmm. This is really only, that, that table was only for if you needed service from for Cox directly. Because they, they have their, um, their information for the physical mm -hmm. dorms themselves, not necessarily like where packages go. Right. But we will, we will get to uh, Mail and Packages later on this stream. I, you know, I did have a question for you about um, ResNet that I was curious about. Mm -hmm. um, that service is obviously offered in the in the, the residence halls and um, is no cost, right? Yes, no cost, no additional yes. cost. Um, Cox is provided. Uh, our support is provided for free, and some of the other services too are also provided for free. Mm -hmm. Okay, back into ResNet here. Our hours of operation. Um, it says ten to five p.m. 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. on the website, but we will actually operate 8 a.m. to 7 p.m., I believe, uh, during move-in to kind of help students with the flexibility. Mm -hmm. um, they'll be moving in all day and um, 8 to 5, you know, that's like, like the peak hours of business, but then they kind of cool down in the evening, but they still might need support getting their devices connected. So I use um, an Xbox at home for my gaming. Yes. Is it hard to bring like an Xbox or a PlayStation mm -hmm. or a Roku? No, no, no. All these devices, um, they are constantly maintained by UITS, our mm -hmm. campus network service system. Um, but they should be easily, mm -hmm. like easy to use, easy to connect. Um, I'll get into some of the devices. A lot of students bring um, gaming consoles, PS4s, Xbox Ones. Um, you can use them through Wi-Fi or wire connections, and it works flawlessly most of the time. Um, but you know our campus is constantly changing. The UX is constantly making upgrades. But if there's any um, conflicts, we'll let you know, and you can contact us to get any information and updates about um, network troubles you're having. Um, let's see, we also have uh, streaming devices: Roku's, Fire Sticks, uh, Google Chromecast, I believe, and Apple TVs. Um, all of those except Google Chromecast, I believe, are supported. Um, with Google, we're still trying to work with UITS to get that supported. Um, but Amazon, Roku, and Apple TV should work. And then we have our smart assistants, such as the Google Home Mini and the Amazon Alexa Echo Dots. Oh, yeah. um, I believe the Google Home Mini works. There are some workarounds we have to do with that to get it online, but you can contact us for help if you're bringing that device here. Amazon Alexas aren't working at the moment, but like I said, we are constantly working with UITS to bring many of these devices online. Mm -hmm. um, and we have your, your typical smartphones and laptops. Um, those always work 100% of the time. Yeah. Um, with your laptops and your smartphones, just note that you want to connect to UARC Wi-Fi. And then for any devices that stay in the residence hall, such as um, those streaming devices, those smart assistants and gaming consoles, uh, you'll want to connect to York Housing IoT Wi-Fi. Um, we will be emailing out a quick guide to students, um, just in case this information is kind of overloading. And we also have many other technicians on the phone um, ready to give you information that you need or any support that you need. So um, don't be bummed, like don't feel overwhelmed <laughs> by all the information I'm giving you about ResNet. But um, yeah, feel free to contact us if you need if you forget like any of the tips we provided you today. Yeah, you guys are gonna keep me connected. Good. I can tell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's pretty much it about ResNet. Do we have any questions? Um, we do have a mailing question, but I might save that for when we get to the mail part okay, of the mail. services. So next on the list we have Fix-It. Um, 
Fixit is a service um, your students can use if they have any um, concerns in their dorms about like you know their physical, your drawers, your light bulbs, stuff like that that needs repair. Um, this service is free of charge if it is um, deemed that you know the the damage wasn't intentional. Mm -hmm. um, but if it if they find that you know you smashed your wall or something like that on purpose, um, they will charge you for that. So with fix it. So they shouldn't smash their walls. No, <laughs> I don't recommend. <laughs> um, it's a pro tip right there. Mm -hmm. Don't smash your wall. So with fix it, if you want to submit a request, you can come to our, like I said, our housing. York at EDU, come to services, scroll down to fix it, and click this fix it request tab right here. And it'll give you um, a how to on how to submit a ticket. Um, it's pretty straightforward. What you want to do is come up to this top left and click submit a new work request. And then you just select your building. We're in Futural Hall. Click next. And you just enter your information and then the request that you are in need of and you hit submit and this will be submitted to our facilities and maintenance um, faculty our staff members and they will get in contact with you um, when to schedule an appointment and once you submit this ticket um, you are actually giving permission for housing staff to enter your your room whether you're not there mm -hmm. um, just just a note and, I, and I'll, I'll mention that now during the COVID times, and this is a practice that we've previously done, you'll be notified before, uh, you'll be notified, we'll enter with masks, we'll clean everything we touch, and then we'll leave a sign to let you know that we've been in there and that we've in exactly what we've done. So we're not going to just, um, you know, come in and be in your place. This, yes. is, your, this is your residence hall, not, and it's, it's, it's a private place for you. I think that's pretty much it about fix it. There's also a key request. I believe if you lost your key or if you've broken it, um, you can submit a key request here. Actually, I think that is for um, staff. Oh, that's okay. for staff only. <laughs> uh, one thing I'll mention also about the fix it is that uh, if you want your bed lofted prior to arrival, uh, that's a place where you can do that. I would say at this point, probably won't happen before you get here, but we'll do it within the first week or so. So if you want your bed lofted, that's a good thing to go is to, to do it there. Next up on the list of services, we have our laundry service. So this is also free of charge. Um, students don't have to bring their coins like they do at laundromats to do their laundry. That's pretty neat. Um, the laundry, laundry rooms are typically the first floor in a lot of the dorms, but in Maples, I believe it's on like the corner of each wing on each yeah, floor. They're, they're different in every hall, but there's ample laundry facilities. Um, yeah, and Laundry Alert is a pretty great app. Um, it, as Tyler was saying, uh, you know, or if you'd like to, uh, that it will uh, tell you uh, which laundry devices are open, which are being in use before you even go down there. And then if you want to, you can go down there and um, you know, put your clothing in and tell Laundry Alert and it'll tell you when they're finished. You'll get a you'll get an SMS text message as well. So that can be pretty helpful. Uh, Laundry Alert is available on this web page right here. So you can use your computer. You can see here there are 10 washers available in Adohi A and nine dryers available. Only one dryer is in use. And you can sort by, um, you can select your dorm if you only want to view that one. And there's also an iOS and Android app available if you want to connect your phone to Laundry Alert. Great. services and we'd recommend that um, that you use the app the apps um, stronger than necessarily the browser yes okay. next up we have mail and packages we'll just touch uh, briefly on this so with um, mail and packages delivered to the dorms um, not every dorm not every package will go to like your direct dorm sometimes they'll go to a a resident hall with um, more flexibility in terms of their infrastructure with PO boxes and front desk staff yeah, and have, accessibility. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a number of halls where if you want to send something to um, one hall, it actually will, you'll pick your package up at a different hall. Mm -hmm. And this information on the website right here is fantastic for knowing 
where you need to mail your package. So let's see, we can see here for go to Founders. So Founders Hall, um, you won't receive your mail and packages at Founders. You'll actually receive it at Humphreys Hall. Mm -hmm. And it will tell you the information for your, your hall and your, um, your coordinated mail and pickup um, dorm. Let me scroll down. I believe there is a page somewhere that has the actual PO addresses it's here. But yes, on this on this web page, um, you can find all the information you need about picking up um, mail and packages. If you're looking for the addresses themselves, if you go into the hall, so you can go up to the top of the web page, go to halls right there, and then go to in the any one individual hall. Scroll down. There you go. Here you can see the uh, the mail address for picking up and dropping off packages, mm -hmm. and then the actual physical location is also listed uh, right next to it. So that's just that's just a very important thing to note. Actually, if you're going to send or um, have package delivered to you, is to make sure that you're not delivering it to um, the physical address. Just make sure it's um, being delivered to the the PO box, mm -hmm. the mailing address. Yes. Does that answer the question that we got earlier? Um, not quite. This well, a little bit. Uh, Cameron <laughs> asks, "How will I receive packages?" Which I think we we just explained. Mm -hmm. um, and is there a limit on how many I can receive during the year? No, I believe not. No, there is no limit. No limit. How many do you want? We do. <laughs> we do tens of thousands of packages. Um, I think per semester, it's um, people are increasingly getting their uh, you know, stuff that way, and so we've grown to accommodate it. Yeah, and I believe the size of the package doesn't matter either. Um, a friend of mine actually last year ordered um, carports and bike mountain biking gear. It was these huge boxes that he would have to haul from the PO box back to his dorm. But um, there's also no size limit, I believe, too. We're, we're prepared for mm -hmm. larger packages. Um, it's always a question of volume. So like if it's a package that can fit into one of our designated package receptacles, that's ideal. If it can't, then one of our front desk people will be like, all right, it's back here and, and give it to you, even if it's gigantic. Yeah. So do we have do, any other questions about mail and packages? Just along with the how will I receive packages question, um, do students get an alert when they have mail? They do, yes. Okay. They get an email, email alert is what they get which explains basically the process that's defined here um, in general. Um, and I would, we don't need to read it to them, um, but, yeah. but I would suggest that you go through there and you'll have a good understanding of the packaging, pro the package recept receiving process. The, I guess the general consensus of picking up your package is make sure you have a student ID on you mm -hmm. um, so it lines up with you know, the package name and you just sign for it and then go check it out to you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I'd say that the majority of issues we run into with packages is it got delivered on the weekend. When can I get it? And usually that would be a Monday. Um, we don't have front staff members there, you know, 24 seven. We have we have professional staff in the halls, but not front desk staff there all the time. So just be aware that the package may show as delivered according to Amazon or or USPS. And, and, and you won't be able to just grab it immediately. It may be an extra 24 hours as it goes through our processing. Sounds good. Come over to our next service, which is mental health. Yeah. Um, so in our residence halls, we actually provide um, what they call counselor in residence, I believe, CIRs. Mm -hmm. um, if you go into this webpage, you, it provides you with all the information you need about mental health in our residence halls. I think it's a pretty neat um, service we provide for our students. Um, it is free of charge, correct, Chris? Uh, to a certain degree, yes. Um, certainly, if you're having an issue of struggling um, with uh, exams or the stresses, the many stresses that college students experience, um, they're there and they will take your, they'll listen and they will help you work through that stuff. Um, when it gets to a more advanced level, as to say the service is used repeatedly and I think there are some insurance issues that can pop up but certainly initial no problem at all um, we want our resident um, students to have that access 
through the Pat Walker Health Center and through housing collaborated together uh, a space where you can go and talk about what's troubling you. And I mean, this is a very unique time, a very unique semester coming up. So we anticipate that, you know, students, particularly those who are transitioning from their own home environment into their first year of university life might need to avail themselves of, you know, some, some, some mental health counseling. And uh, we hope that you'll use that service. Yes, definitely. So on this webpage, you can find contact information for different uh, CIRs on campus. I believe, Yes. So in Reed Hall, there is a counselor, and there's also a counselor in Gibson Hall. Let me point out one thing about that is these spaces where these counselors are is very discreet. Um, it's not highly visible as to when you're visiting such a place, we know that can add additional layers of stress. So um, yeah, so feel free to uh, take advantage of it and know that it won't be a highly visible thing. Sustainability. Um, yeah. Our campus is very, um, we're very green. creative. Green. Um, green. There's a P word I'm looking for. Proactive. That's proactive, right. okay. <laughs> very proactive about um, being eco friendly. You'll see many um, uh, recycling uh, bins in the residence halls. Mm -hmm. And they're also categorized by paper, plastic, aluminum, uh, cardboard, I believe, in the housing office. Mm -hmm. and um, you know, just your regular trash somewhere. Um, and also, this page also tells you what exactly we recycle and what we don't recycle, and the process of doing that. And we recycle tons during move-in. Well, you'll see special designated areas to do recycling during the move-in process because so many people are buying um, um, various different things to decorate their residence hall room, and, and they'll have packaging, and we don't want you to throw it away. We'd like for you to put it in the recycling bin so that we can, uh, you know, use it again. Um, that's important to us. And we have a lot of uh, water stations around, so be sure you bring a, a water bottle so you don't have to uh, use a disposable. See, it'll also give you some tips on um, different sustainability uh, living lifestyles in your room, in your hall, and just around campus. It's a pretty neat page to check out if you're looking to conserve our planet, save the planet. Yeah. And here at the bottom, um, the university, or is it Fayetteville? It's a collaboration mm -hmm. uh, between Fayetteville and the university for the VO Ride program. Now, mm -hmm. we do have the scooters that you've probably seen at other universities <laughs> as well, uh, automated scooters, but we also have this program, which is you can check out a bike pretty much anywhere on campus and uh, use, it f use it for a minimal cost and then drop it off um, a couple months ago, I got one that was one of the uh, electric ones, and it was pretty fun to ride around campus on the electric mm -hmm. one. So it's definitely a college checklist, bucket list item to do once you're, once you're on campus. I think it's pretty neat. It's very inexpensive, too, mm -hmm. and the electric scooters are pretty fun to ride um, yeah. around campus. They can go pretty quick, so I'd be careful if you've never ridden an electric scooter before. Yeah, <laughs> maybe bring a helmet, even. Yes. Yeah, but for those um for those ride sharing uh, bikes and scooters, you would just download an app um, specific to that company, Feel Ride, Spin, and third. There's a second scooter Ooh. company. That's the only ones I can remember, but I'm you're, you're better than me. Hmm. Is orange or blue one? I can't remember. Okay. okay. They'll know as soon as they get here. <laughs> they'll see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, we 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 do try to be as um, environmentally aware as we can be, um, and. Uh, there's an office for sustainability that also provides additional information beyond just sort of the residence hall experience as to how to be as um, green in this community as we possibly can be. Well, I think yeah. that covers the main services. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you have any questions about any of the services we provide here in our housing building? We have not received any more questions. I'll give everyone maybe some time if they wanted to submit any, mm -hmm. but. So let me ask you a question, Tyler. You're a, uh, a computer sciences major, correct? Yes. What's that been like? Um, it's actually been kind of rough um, yeah. with COVID last semester. Um, that's when I really tackled my tougher, higher level classes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but fortunately, the professors are very forgiving yeah. during those times, and um, they made accommodations for students. Um, you know, in terms of exams, quizzes, homework, and um, helping us understand some of the content better. 
Sure. But um, I, I love the College of Engineering. If you're kind of undecided, I'm, I'm a little biased, but definitely go towards the College of Engineering. They're um, wonderful staff, wonderful community. You'll make a lot of new friends there. Nice, nice. nice. Um, well, yeah. I think that's it. Thank you, Tyler. No problem. Thank you for having me. Give us a wave. Bye, everyone. <laughs>